Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be going over the basics of using GraphQL mutations in ApeBase. Specifically, that's performing create, update, and delete actions on your table records. Let's jump right into it. So before we start writing our own mutations, I just wanted to share with you that at docs.apebase.com, you can go look at the mutations documentation that will give you some more context around what we're gonna be discussing in this video. However, let's jump over to our ApeBase workspace and in here, I created a simple table called leads, which only stores a name, email, and phone number. For the sake of the examples we're gonna be going with, this will work just fine. So now let's jump to our API Explorer and start writing some mutations. So to get started, I'm first gonna remove all these comments, open up the API Explorer a little bit more, and write our first curate mutation. So we're gonna create our first lead. So writing a mutation, giving it brackets, and then since we created our lead table, we can see that ApeBase created a few mutations for us, so or operations. So we can create a lead, we can update a lead, we can delete a lead, and we can create many leads at one time. For right now, we're just going to do one lead create, pass it a data argument, which is going to be an object, and then here, if we press option space, we can see the different fields that we have to specify, which are name, email, and phone number. So first let's throw a name and let's just name this Jess, this lead Jessica James. And for an email, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna give it email is Jessica at job.com. Cool. And then finally, for a phone number, what we're gonna do is since we use the smart field for phone number, it takes an object which takes the country code as one argument or parameter. And we're gonna say plus one, and then the actual number for the next one, which we're just gonna give it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is zero. Cool. And then we'll specify that, okay, well, if this gets created, all we want back is the ID and name. Let's run this mutation and boom, we can see that, okay, uh, Jessica was created and that is now her ID. Jessica is now our first lead and now that we have our ID, we can use it to create an update or delete the record. Right now, let's create an update by changing her email address. So to do that, we're gonna do a couple things. First thing, we're gonna change the operation to be lead update. We're then gonna pass ID as one of the one of the keys. Oh, one second. Cool. Let's delete the other information that we're not trying to update. And let's give our new email address. Let's say it's email address is at new job. Cool. In the response, we're just going to say that, okay, if the update was successful, all we want back is the update email address. And now if we run this, perfect. The email address was updated. So let's take this one step farther now and say that we actually want to delete Jessica's record. So we're gonna copy the ID one more time. Let's delete the data. And then we can see in here, ooh, one second. Lead delete is the new operation. And we're going to pass it. Take rid of this, get rid of that data and ID. Cool, in there. If Jessica had any related records that belonged to her and were mandatory to her relationship, we could pass the force flag, which would cascade the delete operation. However, now we're just gonna specify that, okay, on delete, we just want back the success response to whether or not Jessica was successfully deleted. So if we run this now, and boom, the record was deleted. When it comes to defining relationships or connecting records or disassociating records, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do as well. We're gonna cover a lot of those in another video. However, what I do wanna show you is that here in the Documentation Explorer, if you were going to go to the mutation category and look up our lead table, we can see all the different mutation operations that you have available to you. So for example, if we wanna do a lead create many, we can see that, okay, it returns the type lead mini response and it accepts the argument of data, which is a lead, lead create many input. If we were to look at that, we could see that it would be an array of the field's name, email, and phone number. So hopefully you found this video helpful in kind of giving you a jump start on using mutations. Like I said, we're gonna go over more advanced mutations in a subsequent video. However, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the comment thread below, as well as reach out if you would like any support in getting, helping you get started on ePace. Speak soon.